Hi, I'm Pastor Willie Vaughn with Out of the Box Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining me today. At Out of the Box, we're all about taking God out of the box of the church to get Him into your life, while taking you out of the captivity of your old self and into the life of freedom that God wants you to have. And we do this by creating digital resources to inspire, encourage, and equip you to grow spiritually and succeed in every area of life. Today we're going to be looking into an Old Testament passage, a story, a weird story about a man named Ezekiel and how God brought him into a, a weird place, a special place, and what God is trying to speak to us and tell us through that interaction. By the end of our time together, we're going to learn at why it's so important to assess our situation, admit our failures, but also look at what we have to work with. Why asking the right questions about possibilities is so important to shaping our future. And how to articulate, how to speak into our situation. The words we tell ourselves and the words we listen from others are so important and powerful in what we move forward in. And the aspiration, the inspiration we need, the, and how to get the emotional energy required to overcome our failures and our obstacles in life. So we're going to read again from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. But before I do, I want to give a shout out to Justin. Justin, thanks, thank you for subscribing. I hope and pray that this message continues to bless you and encourage you. All right, so let's read together from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, and I'll be reading the first 10 verses. He says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, and there was, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Now, well, when we get into this, obviously, this seems a little bit scary. One of those like horror movie type settings. But I want you to understand that God used the prophets and gave them dreams and visions to reveal himself to us. In fact, that's what it says in Numbers. God says, I will give a prophet to you, and the, these prophets have dreams and visions that I will use them to reveal myself to you. And so God is speaking to us through a vision. It's not so much that Ezekiel is actually standing in this whole valley of bones, but he's having this vision, and this vision has a deeper meaning than just the, the surface. And God loves taking things and taking a deeper meaning and giving us these stories and these pictures so that we can kind of utilize that. You say, say, a picture's worth a thousand words, and that's what God is doing here. He's giving this picture. And so God takes Ezekiel and he takes him into the valley of dry bones, and he has him walking back and forth. He's taking him back and forth, and sometimes that's what our life feels like. We feel like we're out in a dry desert valley and there's just broken dreams and broken pieces everywhere. And I love how God starts out this interaction with Ezekiel. He just has a move back and forth looking out over all the pieces. It thinks of it uh, makes me think of how our lives sometimes can feel like a puzzle. And, you know, God has all the pieces and sometimes I look at my life and say, I see how there's pieces over here and pieces over there, but how do they come together? 
Now, I'm not much from doing puzzles, but I know that when you do take a puzzle, you dump all the pieces out, and the first thing you do is just kind of spread them all out. Make sure the colors are all facing up. You get them all so you can look at them all, kind of get a feel for the situation, and that's sometimes what we need to do in our lives. We need to assess the situation. When things have fallen apart, look at the situation. Look at everything that's going on, and look at the broken pieces of our life, and just take the time. I think this is so valuable. Now, I'm not saying dwell on it. It, but take some time when things have fallen apart, when your dreams haven't come true, when things seem, have seemed to blow up. Take the time and get away, and get alone, get out there and spend some time just going back and forth, maybe walking it out. And it's so, so powerful, just take some exercise. Don't sit in your room and sulk and, and moan, but walk it out and think about what happened, what went wrong, what mistakes you made and what things could have gone better, there's a beauty in that. Now, even if you did everything right, sometimes things do fall apart, but it's good to acknowledge, hey, guess what? None of us is perfect. And I think this is like the, in the military, they have an after action report. They call it an AAR. Whenever an incident happens, they stop and assess what happened. How did we do? What can we improve? And so when you're assessing a broken situation in your life, when you're assessing maybe what could maybe was a failure, it's good to assess and really think, what mistakes did I make? Not to dwell on the, your failures, but to dwell and say, what can I learn from this situation? It's only when you make those assessments that you can actually learn and grow and do something different in the next time. But also, it's the assessing, like I said, when you're building a puzzle or something, it's knowing what pieces you have to work with. So often, God takes the what we think are the broken pieces, the little things that we have, and He brings those together to make something beautiful. I think of Moses. If you know the story of Moses in the Old Testament, he led the Israelites out of Egypt. Well, do you know that Moses was kind of a bit of a failure too because he tried to do what God called him to do in his own strength. And he ended up killing an Egyptian soldier and then running for his life as a fugitive. But then God calls him at the burning bush and says to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Listen, I know that you made a mistake. I know that you failed. But what do you have in your hand? What do you have to work with? And Moses is like, all I have is a, is a, is a staff. And yet God used that staff in Moses' hand to do great things. In the book of 2 Kings, the, the prophet Elisha meets with a widow and helps a widow. And he asks her, listen, what do you have in your house? What do you want me to do for you? Give me something to work with. And she says, I don't have anything except a little bit of oil. And yet that little bit of oil, that little ingredient, is exactly what God used the prophet Elisha to give money and financial resources to this widow. So when Ezekiel is in the Valley of Dry Bones, he's looking out at the situation, he's looking out at all the bones, and those are the bones that God brings together and creates this vast army. What are the, what are the things in your life that you have? Maybe the broken pieces, and those are the broken pieces of broken dreams or opportunities that God can bring together if you let them. Sometimes you gotta look at what ingredients you have to work with. I love watching those cooking shows sometimes and whether it's guys grocery wars or chopped and they, they always seem to give the chefs this strange list of ingredients and then the chefs have to come up with a some kind of culinary experience out of these weird weird ingredient list that they have. But the, sometimes those are the most amazing recipes. And so God can take even the broken, strange pieces of your life and bring about something great. And so we need to, when we have a brokenness or a failure, look at the broken pieces and say, what do these pieces give me an opportunity to do? What do I have to work with? And so after we assess the situation, again, don't stay there. That's the first part of the process. Take the time to assess your situation. Think about the mistakes you made. Think about what could have gone differently and then look and see what now do I have to work with? What are these broken pieces? What are these bones that I can bring together? And start asking questions. And I love how God does this. See, Ezekiel is just standing here and God asks Ezekiel, he said, hey, can these bones come together? Can these bones live again? And Ezekiel is like, you only know, God. God, you alone know. But sometimes we need to ask ourselves. We need to ask the questions. What does this brokenness give me an opportunity to do? 
We think about COVID. Again, it just keeps coming back. COVID opened up so many possibilities in the world because of something that seemed to fall apart. How many people now have the ability and not in the freedom to be able to work from home, to be able to be more effective and efficient and have that freedom that may have never come about if there wasn't a brokenness. I don't even know, maybe perhaps this ministry kind of formed out of that where everything seemed to, to change and was scattered and things weren't working and yet now there's something beautiful growing out of that. So ask these questions. What is made possible by the situation that you're in? But you're losing something. Sometimes we lose, but it frees us up with our time or our resources or our abilities, and we learn these things. So ask the right questions. You know, in the book of James, James says, you have not because you ask not. And sometimes we don't even know the answers because we don't even bother to ask. Ask ourselves, hey, what can I do? What can I change? What can I accomplish in this situation? And I think so often we don't give ourselves the opportunity to ask. Now, of course, Sometimes we need to ask ourselves and get outside of our own box and say, ask what is possible. You see, very often we have this skill as people that we can discount ourselves, we can sell ourselves short. So don't ask, what can you accomplish with this brokenness? Ask, what is possible because of this brokenness? Or ask and put on somebody else's plate, what could somebody else do with this opportunity? And the beauty in that is we tend to see the possibilities when we start to see outside of ourselves. And you realize if something else can happen, if somebody else can make something happen, why not you? See, God is saying, Ezekiel, can these bones come back to life? And Ezekiel's like, hey, listen, it's possible with you, but I don't know if I could do it. And that's often how we feel. Hey, it's possible for somebody else. And so you ask that question, start with that question. What is possible? And then say, okay, maybe if it's possible for somebody else, why can't it happen? for me? Why can't it happen by me? Why can't it happen through me? And sometimes we can say, well, I lack. And even if you do lack, okay, whatever, if you lack the resources, you can earn them. If you lack the skills, you can learn them. Whatever, and sometimes that's about asking the questions. What needs to change in order for this to happen? What needs to change in order for this to come together? What needs to change in order for this to be rebuilt? Ask those questions and you can start to get those goals and those visions and you can get that process. And again, asking in such a way that you ask, is it possible? You know, Henry Ford was famous for saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So again, start with asking, is it possible? Not can I do it? Is it possible? And then ask the questions, what would it take? What would it take for this to happen in my life? What would I need? Maybe you need to get a little bit of, of startup cash. Maybe you need to learn some skills or go back to school. Maybe you have some certain things you don't know how to do and you lack the ability and you just need to get the right people in your group, in your inner circle to help you bring it about to fruition, to help you bring these things together. There are so many things that are possible. If we're willing to ask just that first question, is it possible? The same question that God asks Ezekiel. And then we need to articulate. I like keeping these words simple. These, this assess, ask, articulate, and, and just to be able to, for us to grasp this process. And God tells Ezekiel, prophesy. He says, speak over the bones. And he says, speak. And sometimes you need to be able to speak the right words. How many of us could use a good pep talk? And how many people have you seen it say, the first thing they do is they get up in the morning and they look in the mirror and they give themselves a pep talk. There's so much power in the words that we say, the words that we tell ourselves. And this beauty of speaking and prophesying and articulating is sometimes, I know for me, it's this power in it. You see, Proverbs 18, 21 says that there is power, there's power in the tongue. The power of life and death are in the tongue. And whoever loves them will eat of its fruit. And so we need to be able to speak. And the beauty of it is, I know even for me, when I'm writing these messages, I'll spend time reading, I'll spend time studying and, and meditating on the Word, and then I'll even spend maybe some time just sitting at the computer in silence, typing away and having all these words flow. But then there's a process that I like to verbally process things. I like to speak out. And when I start talking, when I start actually saying the words out loud, it's things that come to mind that I wouldn't have thought in my own mind, in my own head. You ever surprise yourself 
when you get into a situation and you blurt out some words you didn't even know you were thinking. That's the power of our words. There's so much power. And so speaking over our situation, speaking over our brokenness, talking it out, maybe talking with others about what is possible is so powerful. There's a power in the words that we speak. And so we need to be able to talk it out in the situation that we're in. Get audible. Sometimes it's not until you say something that you realize how crazy it is. Or when we discount yourselves and say, oh, I can't. And then you have to ask, why not? Again, it's a speaking these words out. There's such a power in that. And so Ezekiel, God tells him, hey, prophesy, articulate, speak over these bones. And something happens. These bones begin to come together. There's a rattling sound as the bones come together. But again, sometimes as I was reading this, I realized that sometimes we get halfway through the process and we want to give up. You see, the bones came together and the tendons came on them and the flesh came on them, but they didn't have any life in them. And so God could have stopped right there. Ezekiel could have said, well, I guess it's not going to work out. And God says, no, prophesy again. Prophesy now, not just to your situation, not just to your circumstance, but God says, Ezekiel, talk to the wind, talk to the breath, and tell the breath to get into this situation. Talk to the wind to get into this situation. And we need to articulate that of getting the, the wind and the passion. And sometimes we need that wind, that breath, that life, and that passion to really revive our dreams. It's, and this is a beauty of it is when you realize that in this life, it's not just the, the money that you have, it's not just the opportunities that you have, but there's something so powerful about passion. And very often, the, this idea of breath, of wind, of, of life is found throughout the Bible and it's to illustrate the Spirit of God. In fact, we have this Greek word, the pneuma, which means the Spirit or breath, and it's used throughout the New Testament to talk about the Holy Spirit. It's the same word that we get for pneumatic tools, these air-powered tools. And it says, the Bible tells us that the, the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence of that Spirit in us is love, joy, and peace, and hope. And so when we have that hope, you see, it's when we not just having the skills, not just having the resources, but sometimes to really make your dreams come true and come back to life, you need that energy, you need that love, you need that joy and that hope. And so God says, speak to that hope. And sometimes we need to get that fuel, whether it's speaking not only to our situation, but it's also speaking to others, allowing others to speak into our lives. That inspiration, that joy, that fuels us out to be able to accomplish great things. It's that articulation. And that articulation leads us to the aspiration, to aspire. Again, it's that power of hope. You think about a kite. A kite is just all the ingredients necessary, but it doesn't soar to heights in the sky until that wind gets underneath it, until that energy gets underneath it and lifts it up. And God tells Ezekiel, speak to the wind, speak to God. And sometimes it's about praying, praying to God and inviting God into your situation to bring about that energy, to raise you up, to be able to accomplish things that were impossible without it. See, sometimes it feels like your dreams are dead. And even if you could rebuild them, do you have the energy? And we need that energy. We need that energy of that joy, the energy of God and his spirit working in us to give new life to our dreams, to give new life and meaning and purpose to what God has for us. And so God has given us this great message. And the beauty of it is God is a restorer of dreams, a restorer of brokenness. This is just one example in the Bible where God takes something that seems like completely a uh, lost cause, totally hopeless. The bones are dry, brittle, dead beyond dead. And God brings them together because God is in the business of rebuilding, restoring, and redeeming and repairing our lives, that we bring them to God, when we bring God into this situation. In fact, in Isaiah 61, it says, God says, I will come and give you beauty for your ashes. I will give you joy, the oil of joy for your garment of despair. I will take your brokenness and bring about gladness and joy and worship and praises. You keep, you went out, you go out, weeping and working with tears, but you will harvest with shouts of joy, the Word of God says. And that's what God wants to do in our lives, even when everything falls apart. And so if we're willing to come and let God into our lives so we can assess ourselves, when we can test ourselves and say, hey, this is where I've messed up, and to really look at what we have to offer and then ask the questions. Ask God to come into our lives and say, God, I need your help. 
and to be able to listen to his word, not the words of death, but the words of life. In fact, Jesus was once ministering and it seems everyone was leaving him and he asked Peter, he says, are you gonna leave too? And Peter says, you hold the words of life. Where else can I go? And God wants to give you the words of life. He wants to give the word to you to lift you up and to give you that power, that power of inspiration, that power of joy, that power of meaning, and that power of purpose. And not only does God want to restore your broken dreams, but he wants to restore and rebuild and redeem your soul. In fact, in Ephesians 2, it says this. It says, but because of God's great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. And sometimes we think we're so far from God. We're so, our situation is so hopeless. We've done too many things. Our entire life, our soul is just at, in that valley of dry bones. We're just dead and lifeless. And yet, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, because he took the punishment for our sin, he is ready and willing and desiring to take us who were dead in our transgressions, dead in our rebellion against him, and make us alive in Christ. It will just come and give it, give our lives over to him ask him to come into our hearts and minds and so not only do I want to see you grow and be able to use this process to rebuild your life to rebuild your dreams even after things have fallen apart I also want to give you the opportunity even now if you want to invite Christ into your life not just to rebuild your broken dreams but to rebuild your broken soul to bring back an eternal life and an abundant life that God wants to give you would you just pray with me now and just say these words Jesus I need you. Jesus, my life has fallen apart. I have made mistakes and I've sinned against you. I've messed up and I don't know how to get out of this on my own. Jesus, I believe you are God. I believe you died for me. You died on the cross for my sins. And I also believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. So you are alive now. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive my sins and start speaking to me, leading me and guiding me. I make you my Lord. I'm going to follow in your ways as you give me the ability to do so. I thank you and I receive you now. Amen. And the Bible says that if you've done that, you are a new person. You're a totally new creation. And we would love to share with you and encourage you in your new walk, in your new life that God has for you as he picks up the pieces of your life and makes something beautiful that's never been seen before. So we'd love to hear from you. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, would you just text the word SAVED to 973-358-7194. And we'd love to reach out to you and encourage you, pray for you, and answer any questions you might have. As always, I want to thank you for watching. I hope that this message really, truly did inspire and encourage and equip you on how to rebuild after things fall apart. And as always, till next time, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I.